Hi, everyone. I don't hear anyone. I'm just testing my audio. Hi, Celeste. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Good afternoon, Jaime. <laughs> In chat. Brian's finally getting lunch. That's right. <laughs> Great. Great. I have to say, Brian, I'm always curious what's inside a bowl whenever I see you have a bowl of mm -hmm. food. It's pasta, it's pasta and peas. Ooh. Kind of a carbonara with no meat. Uh-huh. Nice. This is, it's one of my son's favorites. No, but my son didn't. He can, he, he was supposed to make it. <laughs> last night, but he was like, I'm not making dinner. <laughs> that sounds like my son. <laughs> <laughs> my wife is like, okay, I'm making dinner. We can't wait for whatever for the <laughs> moment to strike. Like, yeah. So I think Cord needs to start every uh, session with a new baby picture in the background. <laughs> Your baby is so darn cute. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I just got I just got another one. He's going out and um, he's trying on a new hat. So I'll oh. send it to myself and it'll be my background in a second. Oh, I love that suggestion, Karen. <laughs> Jaime's got his hat on, so maybe Jaime is in, in, inspiration. So I guess it's uh, time to call the uh, meeting to order. Are there, uh, do we have to do a roll call now? I'm not seeing the screen, so yes. All right, I can I can do a quick roll call. Um, sorry, Karen. If if sorry, if you were done with the introduction, yes, or the calling to order. All right, um, Karen Spencer present here. Celeste Jansen here. Janine Hartley. And let's see. Um, John Teague. Janet Ahrens. Alicia Hayes. Let's see. Uh, Tabidi Lewis. Jaime Arredondo. Here yeah, after probably a year of absence. Glad to have you here. Eric Cardella. Diana Rojas. Hi. Hello. Thank you. Great. Well, welcome, everybody. I am, uh, I'm sorry, I'm looking for my annotated or agenda. I've been running from meeting to meeting today, which is what happens. Uh, when you start in Zoom at nine and it becomes sort of a blur. Uh, so I'm gonna, Heidi, let me turn it over to you for a second and then I will find the, the meeting notes so that we don't waste time with my fiddling with my email. I put it yeah. in the chat, Karen, to you. Thank you. Sure. And I emailed it to you too, Karen, just in case that's helpful too. Awesome. Well, uh, our hope for today is, is to finalize the strategic plan framework. I understand that there was a really great discussion at the council meeting and um, we'll discuss revi revision of the, the mission to align with that strategic plan. So we've got some ideas around that and then like to have a discussion around next steps and implementation of the strategic plan. So where do we go from here? So um, with that, um, the discussion around the mission statement, I think Brian we were gonna to look to you to just share some of the thinking that you have um, and maybe even language. Right on. Okay. Yes, Chief Teague. Oh, good. Um, sorry to be late, but to make up for it, I have to leave early. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, we gave all the assignments to you anyway. <laughs> You're welcome. 
I'm just going to acknowledge that as we start that um, like we have two people on this call today. We really appreciate your making time and space to do it. Um, Chief Teague and Jaime who are, I mean, long time serving members and basically <laughs> I've had conversations with the two of them now over the last few weeks about, yeah, the term is kind of coming to an end. We're not gonna spend time figuring out all the ins and outs, but just an, for me, an authentic and honest acknowledgement of the work that you both have done over the, I'll say eight plus years. Uh, and so I'll begin with that acknowledgement because it's not lost on me how much your contributions have meant, will continue to mean, and, and your spirit will be carried on. So. Um, I think I'm going to share my screen. I think that's probably the easiest way to um, <clears throat> kind of do this part of the meeting. Can everybody see yep. that? I, I don't know if there's a way for me to make the, make the um, document bigger. I don't know. That seems dangerous if I start pushing buttons. <laughs> um, but uh, what I want to do is to just quickly scan through this plan, and and then as we get to the end, you'll see some suggestions around the mission. Chief Teak, we were just talking about our agenda for today, and we wanted to kind of revisit for one last time, <laughs> our, our mission statement in light of the conversation, work, et cetera, that we did in the retreat, the post retreat, and have one last final look. Um, and I want that to be grounded in just the work we've already done to date. So I'm not gonna read this to you, but if for those who haven't had a chance or maybe it was a two or three weeks ago that you kind of scanned through this, um, the, this is the longer version of the plan. We have our vision um, of all Oregon's youth have the opportunity to thrive and achieve their full potential. We have the mission statement that was approved in December. Um, so that's there, <clears throat> our values and beliefs. Uh, um, a footnote here at the bottom just related to statutes that pertain to the specific work that we are charged to do. Um, we've got this theory of action. Um, and again, I think hope, hope and think this is familiar from what was done even a few years ago. This, this theory of action could probably um, have some revisit just to maybe make it a little shorter. I know Celeste too, we thinking about and talking about this in the context of kind of the long-term intended result. Again, I don't think today's conversation is the moment that we wanna do that, but it, these are the elements of the plan that we've got developed so far. Um, the overarching goals, there are three of them. I added a little bit of language here in italics, um, just to, to talk about what some of these ideas um, mean, because as I explained them at the retreat and have talked about them going forward, it felt important to give folks a little bit of context. So some of that language, I think you've heard me say verbally, but you may not have seen written down. Um, are there any questions to this point or comments? Um, I think we can share this with you, if, if not, um, um, Melissa, you know, these are, these are e e available <laughs> documents, um, but just wanted to quickly look at, the, look at them. I'm not seeing any questions or comments, so I'm going to keep going. Um, the goals, strategies, and actions, we're going to talk about this in a little more detail here in a minute. Um, as we look at the implementation plan, CORD has done a, a lot of work um, to Put it into kind of a format that we can. Any more lunch? Are you good? Oh, hey Karen, I think you're not muted, but I'm interested. Okay. 
All right. Um, so these are the, the goal strategies and actions organized within the three over, overarching strategies, um, or sorry, overarching goals. None of this should be new. <laughs> it's, it, again, this is um, a little more detailed version of this. So I hope you've had a chance to look at, oh wait, that, that was more the summary. And then beginning on page six, I think we get really into the weeds. Um, we sent this pre um, our last council meeting. So I'm just, I think that this, this detail is helpful. We've I highlighted some questions in blue um, that we may come back to. I think it's important that this committee think about how to wrestle with some of the questions that remain from the retreat. We did our best to answer as many of the questions as we could in specific actions and um, and and in the, the detail, but there are a few remaining questions um, that that you'll see um, in each section. Again, not not necessarily we need to deal with those today, but know that we've captured that. Scrolling on to the bottom here to get to the mission piece. Um, this is the second overarching strategy. You know, question about how hard or easy it has been to recreate, re recruit and retain youth council members. Something I think to, 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 to keep our eyes on. Um, community capacity and justice. And then we get to the bottom here. I'm moving fast because I know we want to actually have some conversation. Um, so one of the, I mean, as, as, I, as we came through this process, I, and I, I'm happy to copy and paste if it's helpful for folks to maybe see the old and the new, but I do think regardless of what we do with the mission statement, I think we all need to be aware that, I mean, we have a mission statement that has a, it's packed full of words. <laughs> so um, I thought about that and have thought about the need that I've heard council members talk about, staff talk about, like, can we come up with something that's um, a bit more, um, you know, a little more of an elevator speech, a little bit, a little bit more of a communications kind of statement? And so again, for me, I thought about the mission. I thought, okay, can we can we reduce some of the words? So this is I offer this to you, kind of in that context, as a potential way to tighten it up. And I will say from the start, I know we there was time even before I came on board that was spent kind of arriving at each of the words. And if it makes, if we don't want to go into a rabbit hole around this, I do think as a part of our communications planning and strategy efforts, we will want to come up with something that is a, um, I don't know, I don't, pithy sounds kind of bad, but, <laughs> but something a little clear, short, and quick about the work of, of the division and the council. And so maybe some of this information is like ripe for use in a more of a communications context. Um, but again, I offer this as a as something for us to, to look at and consider um, and to kind of try to put to bed. Um, but know that I think, again, from a communication standpoint, we, we, mission, communication and brand as they as, as is often referred to we want those things to, to be consistent and something we can kind of own and, and articulate um, and and I think that there's some tightening up that will that we can do so I will stop there would it be helpful for me to put the old mission next to the new this this highlighted part represents some of the 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 new words but it doesn't i didn't do like a it's not a uh, uh version that i cr crossed out the old and, and told you what the new was so if you want to see one next to the other just let me know why did you add and i'm not being pejorative i'm, yeah, yeah. I'm just scratching away at your thinking why did you add youth strengths and safety the, the the three pil pillars, if you will, are education, career, and, cr and crime reduction. Mm -hmm. In the middle of that, you put youth strengths and safety. What are you thinking? Thanks for the question, Chief. I, 
I think that as we have articulated a, as a part of this plan, a strength-based kind of asset-based approach that, that the, that, that that was missing in the language chief, like something that actually affirmed and said clearly um, that, that we want to uh, highlight that there are strengths on in which we're building. So I thought that was missing. Um, and safety um, seemed also an important way to frame um, this, the idea of juvenile crime and juvenile and, you know, those, the, the, the high, high, uh, what do we call it? High risk behaviors. Um, and so it seemed like we, we could articulate that in a more asset based way and talk about safety. Cord, I see you've raised your hand, so you should jump in. Um, sure, this is Cord Buecher. Um, yeah, Chief T, one reason that I, I don't recall exactly which of us between Brian and I wanted to put the word safety in, but part of my thinking there is that it also refers to the compliance monitoring work. So it's no. also speaking specifically to the fact that the, the council division have this role of keeping young people in secure custody safe. So I thought that that was also kind of good to try to acknowledge in a, a more explicit way. Thanks, Gord. Yeah, what, it, what struck me about it was that it's, it's bookended by these three statutory obligations. I remember at one point we began to, to diverge away from that and Lindsay Capps pulled us back to the statute. Hmm. And so, I, I mean, I'm, I'm all for what you're after. I'm just wondering if it needs to appear somewhere else. Other reactions or, or, or thoughts to that? Or the, the idea that it maybe belongs in some other? I personally like having the reference, uh, kind of that footnote to the actual statute. Mm -hmm. um, that you mm -hmm. have there. Me too. Um, yeah. it, rather than having a footnote, it could also just be, um, uh, you know, a section that says our statutory framework, and then we could have the mission beneath that too. Hmm. Yeah, and, and and you know, when I for those who um, were. Uh, either viewed or, or were listening live when I presented to the Joint Ways and Means Committee on our budget. And, and in many of the presentations that we do, we reference that statutory framework or the statutory language. So it does often appear as a part of the kind of presentations that we do when we're talking about our work. I do have some wordsmithing suggestions, but I don't know if we want to take our time. I know we're supposed to move on to implementation timeline. Should we try and get those to you if we have them, or do you want to spend a few minutes talking now? I see that Chief Teague has a frown, so that I think his inner grammarian is coming out. <laughs> do well, we want to reserve, say, 10 minutes for that? I, I don't know if, well, before we did that, do that, I, it, it, I think there's a fundamental question, again, like, is this worth another 10 minutes of fine tuning? And, 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 and I guess we could do a little, little bit of wordsmithing. Or do we sort of say, okay, you know, we, we could probably do this until the cows come home. And um, let's, let's, you know, as cord and, and you'll see this in the implementation plan as we get to like more communications um, work and the development of a communications plan, we might then come up with a, let's call it an elevator speech or, or you know, something that is 
it becomes a, a communications tool that's that we approve and say this you can say you can talk about our work with in these three bullets <laughs> um and and we will all can acknowledge there's a technical kind of description of our, of our mission and or statutory framework and then some approved basic bullets so that's one way to thread the needle or we can refine the mission this one last time and say you know what um let's 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 tighten this up because i believe you, so my preference would be to fine tune a bit more that that we want the mission and like that elevator elevator speech to be really closely connected and aligned that probably should go without saying but um that's yeah, my the current or previous yeah. mission statement I thought did that rather well, but um, I think it was more, it wasn't highly evocative. Mm -hmm. You may be after something that's more evocative. I thought, the, I thought the other mission statement was very descriptive over what we do or are supposed to do. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Chief. I see a there are a couple of other raised hands, if I'm not mistaken. Thanks, Chief. Maybe, Cord, you put your hand back up. I don't know. Maybe Jaime. Oops, we can't hear you. Yeah, Jaime, you. Yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. To me, like the test for me is does it answer what we do and how we do it? Mm -hmm. And it does. Um, is it perfect? No. Uh, these are imperfect statements, and that's just how it is. Um, is there a language that can make it flow better, simplify it, you know? And so I'm curious to see what Karen has in store um, because if there is, you know, it's, and, 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 it, and it feels better, um, then, you know, why not? But we're gonna go at this, I think, for, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's always gonna be evolving, so. Yeah. Hey, maybe you should throw the other one up there next to it, Brian. I can do that, Chief. Um, hang with me if you, you're gonna see all kinds of, stuff happening right before your eyes and you might wonder um i'm gonna do a copy paste from another document so i don't have to scroll too far all right this is the oh my yep see knew that was gonna happen All right, now you see it. Well, why don't we, I, I have a proposal. I like uh, the proposed new mission. It did take me a, a little while to um, warm up to it just because I knew we had spent so much time on the original one. Uh, but I feel like it, the new one is reflective of what we talked about at the retreat. So I, I considered it more to be an update. And I certainly like evocative missions, uh, mainly because people need a reason to get out of bed in the morning. And if you can give that, it makes going to work so much easier. So here are, and these are only wordsmithing changes for right now. Mm -hmm. um, what I would I would start the beginning off with, rather than saying the mission is to, I would just say YDC YDD, a lot aligns. I yeah. think it's a they. So aligns systems and invest in communities. Gotcha. And Melissa, can you help capture this? I'm going to try to do this. Um, Karen, but I want to make sure I don't, um, you know, if I do this in the moment, I'm sure I will mess something up. Yeah, so deleting the word mission. So YDD, YDC, YDD aligns systems and invests in communities to ensure equitable and effective services for youth ages six through 24. That works. And then I would say, uh, we support educational and career success, affirm youth strengths and safety, 
and disrupt youth crime and violence throughout Oregon and tribal nations. I like the wild, but I I thought it some as, as I tried to say it out loud, it, it was just hard, kind of hard to pivot for it. I think I don't know what others think. I think if we do this, we probably need to move the throughout Oregon and tribal nations to the beginning of that sentence because it with those three clauses, it sounds like in my view, like we're doing the disrupting youth crime and violence in that, in a specific way, because it's so disconnected from the other. Um, the other, do you see what I'm saying, Karen? Do you like that? I agree. Yeah, then it, then it doesn't, that last phrase or clause, I'm not, I'm not going to pretend to be the language arts teacher here, but um, so I, there's a thing to me that I think was missing. And I, as somebody who's done a lot of work on missions about where the where, where is our work? So to your point, Jaime, like what do we do and where do we do it? I think are helpful in a mission statement. Hey, this is Cord. I, um, I did think Chief Teague made a good point about how the addition of uh, affirming youth strengths and safety sort of splices the two sort of statutory related um, actions. And it doesn't seem like it would disrupt it too much to say throughout Oregon and, and tribal nations, we support educational and career success, comma, disrupt youth crime and violence, comma, and affirm youth strengths and safety. Like, it, like if the order is improved by having the two statutory pieces followed by the aff aff affirmation of strengths and safety. I think that flows fine. All right. Any thumbs up or comments to that effect? I'm looking. I'm, am I seeing nodding heads? I see. All right, I see a thumbs up. Look at that. And I don't know if people are into the terminal comma or not, but you know, we can, we'll, we'll re reference our style guides for that later. I don't like terminal commas, but hey. I love them. <laughs> Chief. <laughs> well, it, it is there. Four to me. I, I, I love that you have an opinion. <laughs> I was an English major, English literature major for what it's worth. All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, we all are looking at it. You see the, the before and the, or the, yeah, the before and the after. It's more the after and then the before in order, but I'm gonna, fewer words, I like fewer words. <laughs> I think it's fewer words, I didn't actually count them. Don't make me do that, I'll probably mess that up. Um, Diana, I know you're on the call and I, and, and I know we've got some guests, we'll do some time for guests at the end, but do you have any reactions or, or Celeste? Diana, you first. I'm so sorry, but this is like the first time I joined in a really long time. And I'm really just like taking it all in and then remembering our retreat. So no. Okay. No, don't, do not worry. I just wanted to check. Celeste? I think it reads cleaner this way. I like it. I also um, really appreciate people who do um, group editing processes. I, 
John um, has uh, uh, improved our work before in a really significant way. I so appreciate that. But I am not, that's not the way my brain works. So this looks great. I support you all. Looks wonderful. All right. So shall we move on to the implementation? Let's section? do it. I'm going to stop Great. sharing. Great. I, I love the way that reads. And I feel like you can say it in a plain sentence at any moment and you and it would and it would work, which is such a, a great feeling to have. So now we are moving on to our implementation timeline in uh, detail. So the nice part about the strategic planning committee is that once you have a plan, it feels like it's such a great marker um, for celebrating. And I want everybody to give themselves kind of a round of applause or a pat on the back for the hard work we've done in getting this uh, together. And I know there's more work to be done, but I set certainly want to celebrate and you know this is a great time for me to put out my celebration emoji so I'm going to do that because I love it. Um, so the next step will be uh, and I think this is a word I made up or, or somebody made up somewhere oper oper operationalizing the work that we have I had so uh, what I was envisioning, and I never quite made clear, was uh, that once the plan happened, that we as a committee or a new committee um, would consider how we can help with the execution. Not that we are executing the plan, but that we are monitoring the dates and gates, um, getting reports and information so that we can assure that this plan does not go into a drawer and then for be forgotten, right? So one proposal that we have is for taking um, uh, either dismantling or reconfiguring this committee into a new uh, strategic plan policy committee. So th that's the kind of the first topic that I'd like to just ap approach um, you about, see how you feel, what you think the next step should be to ensure that the plan is executed and, and, uh, and that we can keep it out of the drawer. So uh, let me open it up to everybody for that discussion. I just wanted to say uh, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I feel strongly that the strategic plan should really be owned by the staff in terms of the actions that are the um, specific steps that are utilized that move the progress forward. But if we can help um, not at the action level, but at the strategy level to say, these are key principles that we think we should move on. These are key, um, are like key belief statements in order to make this happen. You know, kind of anything that's at that um, coordination and strategy level that really guides the action. I feel like that there's a role for the committee to further support the strategic plan um, and then set up those mileposts like you suggested. What are those um, dates and times with which it would make sense to do some sort of check-in on a regular basis? Other thoughts? Well, if you can bottle what you're after, you'll make a billion dollars. I mean, that's, that's the problem for every manager and leader in the world. That, that, that is so true. That is so true. You know, I'll throw in that what, what we're going to share here shortly is kind of a detailed, some, not overly, I hope, detailed, but, but a, a, ta a table, a matrix, uh, um, uh, uh, something that, that we can use internally as a staff, 
happy to also have internally mean maybe this committee, whatever it ends up being called, <laughs> to help drive the work. Um, the other, another thing, and I, um, Karen and, and Heidi, I, I meant to email this to you, but I forgot. Um, if we have time, um, I'm happy just to make reference to and show you this um, um, kind of version of a strategic plan tool that the State Board of Education uses. It's kind of in a placemat format. So it's basically the strategic plan on a page. And um, as Court and I were talking this morning, we thought we should build out the more detailed plan. And we're happy again to share that with you to kind of show, show you what, what tool will we think are, is going to be critical to driving the work internally. And then happy to screen share. I'll, I'll send this here in a second to Karen and Heidi and or again, just screen share. Um, oh, Celeste thinks that this thing exists in an online way or virtual way. That would be really cool if it did. Um, but again, happy to share it because I think that at a, at a council level, this placemat version of the of, of our plan, which we could work with somebody to help us design and format could be really, effect, really effective. I think one of the functions that we can play is that, you know, the staff will ensure that we are implementing this and they'll drive those strategies and you know, we'll provide support. But, you know, how, how do we keep it alive at the board level, at the council level? Especially as you know, there's there's turnover, right? Uh, there's um, absences because of life and whatnot. And so I, you know, I think about future members and um, how we can be supportive in that sort of onboarding at, at that level, right? Um, so that they hear this from the staff, but also you know the, the council members, whether that's one or two folks. Um, Yeah, I would envision that the strategic plan update would be part of a, a, a standard agenda item in our quarterly meetings, maybe right after the, the director's update. I agree. And really, because it is not separate from the work, it is the work. It could be a way in which we really just organize our meetings to just run through. This is the way that the strategic plan is laid out. This is how we're moving in each area. There's one piece I, I, mean, I, I think, well, oh, sorry. Um, once we kind of get into talking about the the implementation document that I'll share, I mean, one of the first, I think, pretty significant projects um, among several that we'll be starting with is the council committee work and, and assessing committees, um, the, determining if we need a, a restructuring of committees to better match strategic plan and, and, and for other purposes. And one of the things that Brian and I talked a little bit about was in terms of uh, we've tried to uh, essentially gives some who owns each action in this plan. And generally it's going to be someone on the staff. There are pieces that I think f would probably be in a sense led by a committee of the council, but every committee has one or more staff um, that, that support the committee's work and, and ultimately are gonna be driving that forward. But I think one of the, the little things that are a little bit ambiguous right now is um, if we don't yet know what the committees will look like in six months. It's hard to say, well, how are we going to structure the ownership of these tasks if we wanted to, so if there's a committee that's go, you know, if there's, let's say an equity committee is created, what tasks will that committee lead? And, and then the staff person or staff people working with that committee are, are ultimately the, the folks responsible for moving it forward day by day. But I think the benefit is that if there is a committee link for most or all these actions that the committees are also checking in quarterly and that could be part of the committee's reports to the council is what parts of the strategic plan do committees hold and, and that becomes part of what you're updating the council on whenever you're doing those committee updates. And I think so that's, I mean, this is just kind of speculation on my part, um, how it might work because some of the, the 
structuring that will create that is work to be done in the strategic plan implementation. So I guess that's, I think that's technically known as, as building the ship as you sail it. Um, but yes. We're and I like that. I think that'll make the committee work uh, more exciting to participate on too with, when there's this direct connection between the plan, uh, what YDD is doing and what the needs, of, what the, the focus of the committee. So I think it'll make it much more exciting for folks to be on. One question that I had is a, a kind of a lay person. I, I know that, uh, you know, having worked in business, one thing that's always been really good uh, in assessing where you are on the strategic plan is getting away from the I'm getting in trouble framework. A lot of people feel like if they're reporting on something, they're getting in trouble. Uh, if they're not able to achieve the goals or whatever it is. And um, uh, one of the teams I worked on, they had a framework of talking about kind of here's the status, but then you know what are the needs or what are the policy implications was always the question, right, um, to be asked so that you're more in a problem solving mode. And sometimes the you know you can kind of say, okay, this is not a solvable problem. We're going to have to table that. But at least you're getting out of that framework of every quarter I'm reporting and I'm going to be getting in trouble because I haven't done things. I'd like to know, I guess, where 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 does it work well with government and, and what are some best practices around that? I don't know if I have a complete answer for that, because that's a that's a I think a pretty significant and large question, but I, I think that it would probably make this strategic plan implementation a lot more enjoyable to sort of shift the thinking away from. I mean, there, there's part of what we've tried to set do is set dates and when we want to start things, when we want to finish things, some things can't start until other things are done. And it would be great to, I don't know, this is like, I like that we're looking at, you know, the needs and, and, and if something doesn't get done when we want it done, what does that mean rather than someone's in trouble. Um, I mean, I feel like, I don't know, my work has always been like running from deadlines, um, you know, or, or, you know, running, running towards one, you know, putting off another, like, and I think that there's a lot in this plan. And I can see that there's going to be parts that, I mean, one of the questions that I don't know if we have an answer for yet is like, what happens as we identify things in all of these actions that become less relevant or just can't happen in the next two years? Because right now we're just looking at a, you know a two-year cycle in terms of trying to come up with an implementation timeline and I, I think we don't want to think well if we can't do this in two years that it's really bad i think that where it becomes problematic is if you have like a statutory obligation um i don't i'd have to go through and look i don't think there's much in here where if we don't do it we're like breaking the law so to speak i think that's where in government it becomes a real problem is if you're doing something that you're not permitted to do or you're not doing something that you are required to do. Um, I don't think we run too much risk of that with this, but it is really, I think, about a commitment on the part of the staff and, and the, the, the council that we want to get this stuff done, then supporting each other to do that. If I could add in, I think, Karen, you raised such a good point because it's setting a tone and a culture of how you want to approach doing the work, evaluating, assessing the work, and really creating a culture of support around what do we need to do collectively. And as, we, as you all are thinking about, you know, uh, having committees with staff kind of leading or diving into this work, there are great places to identify supports needed, resources needed, what that can be raised to at the council level who can really advocate for resources or policies that can support those doing the work. I mean, I just think, you know, rather it's a, it's creating a, a mind, a, a mindset of a support 
supported environment that we're in this collectively. I just, I hadn't heard that Karen in the context of strategic planning and it just makes so much sense. I'm really glad you raised that because I have seen it happen where people feel scared because they're in the red zone and they're not achieving their outcome. And that's what we don't want. We want to see support and collective troubleshooting. I think it happens too when we assume that we know what outcomes we're driving for two years from now, where I think what we really have done is set strategic horizons or strategic directions to say we're moving forward in this way in an iterative way, knowing that we're working within a context where we can only, we're, we need to be responsive to what's going on in the outside world. So I think with phrasing and with that understanding, you know, I think if we even have some language to kind of center those philosophies, then we won't get into that period where staff feels like, oh no, we're held accountable for something that really is not our intention right here. Although at the same point, there may be one or two things that are that we think, no, no, this is something that where we do want to set um, some specificity and we think that this seems reasonable and we're all on board for that. I may have gotten us a little off topic with that question, but I, I think it's an important one and I think it might be one for uh, the new or reconstituted strategic planning policy committee to uh, think about, uh, 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 think more deeply about and maybe set up a, a framework around, around it, working with staff, of course, uh, going forward. I think, it's, I think it is an important question, uh, not only just keeping it out of the drawer, but then making sure that it, it's not a bludgeon, right? Um, that it is, a deem we want it to be, uh, as we said, evocative and get people excited. You don't want it to become a weight or a bludgeon around somebody's neck. So with that, I, I would be curious to hear from folks if there are any, if anybody would like to be on the new committee uh, as we go forward. And I know we're gonna be asking this at the, at the quarterly as well, but just trying to see if there's interest. I, I'm, I'm very excited and I'm, I'm, I, I do plan to keep rolling over, so. I'm hoping um, my role on the council changes and that I won't be a chair <laughs> going forward. And I would love to participate in this way. It's a really meaningful way. Um, I am worried about um, doing both. And so I, I would like to support the process, but don't feel like I can add a lot until things shift a little bit. I completely understand that, <laughs> completely. As you can see, I was juggling lunch and meetings and everything else, so completely. Is, is it, and the committee development work, is, is there a way this could be integrated into that? Um, what's, what's the thinking there? So, I mean, I understand the importance of you know, having this be central, right? But what is that looking like? Jaime, say, say, say more. So I want to touch, Court touched on the, you know, like we, we want to um, continue to develop the committee structure, I believe. I think that's what you, you said, Cord. Um, so, you know, could this be, could this fit into one of those homes, you know? This is Gord. I, I don't know if this is this is just kind of a thought, um, or none of this is the answer. But my guess would be that part of the work of this committee—I mean, it's really a committee to continue stewarding the strategic plan work—and um, my guess is that, like one of the, I, I don't. I think that when I looked at who will be responsible for that particular piece for this restructuring. I mean, I guess once we all open this document up in a bit and you'll see some of it, but I put Brian's name down because I don't know who actually, I didn't put Brian's name in too many things. We didn't want to, we didn't want to over assign. 
Um, and we've only assigned the priority actions. There's about 750 other actions that will be assigned. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, that, I like Karen's suggestion there. I mean, it's, I guess it, we don't, it, is it ad hoc? It's probably not a permanent committee. It's really just a group to kind of keep pushing this forward until the, the components of the work can be handed off to permanent committees to continue um, working on over the next two years. That's my guess. That, I, that, does that sort of answer the question? Yeah. yeah. And, and Brian, I, you know, I don't know if that, if you have more to say or if that, that works for you. Yeah, goodness. And I don't know. It, I want to be careful not to create unnecessary committees, <laughs> like another committee, another thing. So, um, and, but I'm not, I'm not saying this is an example of that. I think that this committee, the strategic planning, and then this the, the pushing on implementation is really critical. So we ha there's a specific need, if it could make sense. I do wonder if there is an existing committee where this work could land. So we, I, I think we need a it's not very active, but it does exist. I think we need a kind of an executive committee, which is basically the chairs of, of the different existing committees. And if, again, if we add an, say an equity committee or a policy committee, I think those, those chairs would, would be critical. Um, um, so my preference is is or my question slash preference is like could this work be this part of the central work of a functioning executive committee we can call it the executive and strategic planning committee or that we can add you know we can add words we can even add terminal commas to it um but i i i don't yeah I ideally want us to push, like, let's not create something in addition that where that may be seven months from now, like what, what is the actual function and purpose? Or is it, is it because it didn't have a, as clear of a purpose, it then becomes not as useful. So I feel like it, this, executive committee and or if we created if we had a kind of a clear policy committee um, that it potentially could live there we have a thing called the administration and rules and it's got like three different it's got like so many words i can't it's not a bad thing administration governance and rules i just I think that's what it's called i just don't want to get it wrong which to me kind of sounds like internal policy. Um, so long story short, is there an ex something existing that may not be active, but that we need to activate and can, can say, this is, this, this is your central focus and purpose. Um, and then it activates that group. I like that idea uh, only because it does uh, take time to get groups and teams working well and functioning well. And so when uh, Cord mentioned uh, this might end up being an ad hoc group, it's like that's a lot of effort to get it ramped up to work well and then have it finish and, and then um, uh, subside. Uh, so it might be better to have the an executive and strategic plan committee together. Yeah. Just real quick, I want to read my PD's mission statement. Our mission is to help the community maintain order while promoting safety and freedom and building public confidence. It's pretty simple. But I bet 90% of my guys couldn't tell you what it is. Um, I spoke to a leadership class a couple of years ago and I asked the room how many people could recount their agency's mission statements and they're from all over the place. One person could. 
Most people don't care. And at Kaiser, I don't care if my guys know the mission statement. It's not their responsibility to know, to know the mission statement, but it is my executive team's responsibility to make sure everybody exercises the mission statement, whether they know it or not. So our job is to inculcate that into their thinking and decision-making. But it has to be done by people who have the uh, authority and resources to inculcate it. So I, I like Brian's suggestion of the executive team. These are the folks that are guiding the way people think and act. Yeah, and, and I thank Chief. I, I think that that group, we, we, ha, we pulled that group together in January as we we're leading up to the retreat. I, Perhaps over the years that groups also met. Um, yeah, can I interject real quick? And by the way, uh, that executive team around this issue in particular, uh, you can also bring in other people to help further that. Like Karen, I don't know if you're on the executive team or not, but if not, you should probably be part of those conversations. I am, but I don't think we've ever met. At least not in the last year or so. So yeah. yeah, we pulled that meeting together in January pre-retreat. That was in my time. Oh. time the first. Oh, that, I forgot about it. Yeah. Year. That was the maybe first in a while. Chief T, I think you were there, and then Jeff, Par Jeff Parker, Janet. Um, I think Maricela as the youth committee chair. But it's that that that's I, I, Chief. I think you're, I think that core group adding like i'm not into like we get adding karen is somebody who was the chair of the strategic planning like celeste is is well whatever title we'll give you going forward some fantastic title i'm sure but i think i think there's a little bit of a brain trust in that constellation and and i'm eager to make have that be a more active body and and i think again coordinating driving the strategic planning um would make a lot of sense i gotta go i'll miss you people see ya thanks chief and i think you'll see cord put a link i couldn't find it online but I, as a just a point of reference i haven't hit this link but if you all that I think is the kind of thing that we have yet to develop, but we could develop um, that would be just the kind of tool that, um, right, that we could use at meetings and that the, our executive committee could be kind of using as a, as a, as I said, a tool or point of reference. I don't know if has, have folks been, have had a chance to peek at it. It's the type is kind of small. <laughs> or maybe you can make it bigger. Yeah, I was going to say, I like how it's a one pager. Um, and I do feel like there's so much there that to really <laughs> back in is still a lot. But I like the concept and I think that we could take the concept and improve upon it as well. Right. In, in some ways, I'd love to see this like one step further up uh, in the high levelness, um, so so that it's uh, um, truly a one pager because this is actually probably a three pager just kind of squished yeah. into one. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I um, Brian had shared a, a copy with me, and I just looked up the date in the state board. Um, minutes and eventually found my way into their board book and it's a public document so that's there but I looked at the previous I was like where did this come from so they had a retreat two meetings prior um, so they there was a retreat where this stuff all sort of was generated the next meeting I, I didn't look closely but I didn't see anything on the agenda about this and then in October they come back with this document and some guidance for discussion about the document so I feel like this kind of came out of a fairly quick process in their part. And I mean, I, you know, Brian, you may have gotten some insight from 
um, from Kimberly Howard about how this came about, but it, it is, it seems like it's, it's, it's a, seems like a fairly rapid product, you know, and, and I think um, looking at it, like, I think we've like, we sort of have these three overarching goals, the way that there are three goals on, on that document. But then I think that we become much more granular from those three goals. And I feel like there's a layer in terms of like the, the second and third columns on this document that we don't really have and what we've developed because I think this isn't a bad thing. Our strategic plan is very action oriented. Um, it, it, it's, you know, we, we did talk about um, some deliverables and objectives and goals and whatnot, but that was almost like after we came up with a whole lot of work for ourselves to do. Um, so I feel like there's like another, this, this could be work for the, the as yet um, uh, un, unnamed but conceived of committee to sort of extrapolate something that is more high level from what we've got into a document like this that is not seven point type. Yeah, should we just given time, I don't know, um, I think we have got about 30 more minutes. Should we, Cord, do you want to share, um, and I see a thumbs up from Karen, our sort of action plan? Um, you also will experience this potentially as like a lot of information. So just <laughs> be forewarned, but. Um... All right. Um, as requested, uh, there's Salvatore in his cool hat. Uh, he was on his way out to the park right before this meeting. Um, he can come back after, after, after we do the business part here. Um, so I'll kind of quickly just describe what you're seeing here. Um, we've got this strategic plan here. This is the long version. Um, so we really just kind of, I started with the, um, I guess this, the executive summary as a way of trying to develop some kind of model. There's a totally different model that I'd worked on a bit earlier this week. And then yesterday, Brian and I were going over it. Um, we weren't really loving the way that it looked. And then Heidi shared um, a, uh, it was, I believe Northwest ESD's equity plan or, or maybe it was a strategic plan of theirs. And there was a doc or part of the document where they had put together um, a chart pretty similar to this, which seemed like a better format in terms of being something we could use to track progress. What we liked about it was that it, it said, well, what's the evidence that we, have, that, that we complete this work? and who owns it. I think they, in that document, it's called leadership responsibility. Um, we've just, I called it action lead because it's really who is leading the action, pretty straightforward. Um, so what you see here in terms of the columns, we've got the goal. The reason that the goal appears over and over again, and this is probably, this clutters it up is so, um, being a workable document, um, I've got filters in here so that if I ever just need to see, okay, well, what are just the goals around, um, let's see. I don't use the online word, so this is actually super confusing, Never mind. Um, I'll have to learn how to use the filtering in the online version, but you get the idea. So it was a way for us to be able to categorize by goal, to categorize by strategy. As, as you might recall, there are some strategies that have multiple actions associated with them. So, um, I have in some cases edited the actions to make them a little shorter. Um, usually if there is an and, um, I have separated it. This is one where I didn't separate it because the, the examining council structure and developing recommendations is sort of the same thing, but where there were two distinct separable actions, I've sometimes split those up because really we're just trying to track step by step what's happening. Um, to the best of my ability, um, tried to come up with what might be the piece of evidence. Um, I uh, definitely think some of these might be better refined or named, but um, this is basically a, a tool that we could use to track over the course of the next two years, um, what's happening with each of the actions in the strategic plan. Um, start dates are definitely speculative. Um, I've, to some things I'm like, let's just put this off until the till at least 
July. Um, some things might even be later starting, uh, particularly like something related to the 2023 grant process is really something we want to have ready to go in the spring of 2022. So we're not actually probably the sp spring of 23. So I, I mean, I'm still working through the dates, but essentially this is the format. Um, and there are definitely a lot of TBDs in terms of who the lead is. As I mentioned earlier, ultimately there's gonna be a staff person who's gonna be leading these things. I did put my name on some things, um, a couple of other staff, a lot of TBDs. I feel like, um, I mean, for example, the equity um, statement action to me would be an equity committee action, but there would be some staff person associated with the work of the equity committee. Um, so maybe there would be another column where it would be committee and then staff person just for clarity on that. But the goal is to have every action have both some evidence of its having been completed and someone who is going to be the, the, the steward of that work. Um, and I haven't put all of the actions on here, but I have just started, these were, um, I've been working on community capacity, adding some more from the broader plan, but otherwise like systems alignment and transformation, these were our priority uh, strategies and actions here. And um, youth voice and resilience, these are some of the priority strategies and actions there. And I am trying, there are actually a lot of duplicate strategies or, or really closely uh, uh, similar strategies or actions in the strategic plan. So this, we would pick one. We're not gonna, we're gonna try to avoid duplication on this since we really are just now gonna wanna um, be able to track the work. So I can put a link if you are interested in this document um, that's set up right now so anyone with a link can edit. So I will share it in the chat. Um, but if you'd be so kind as to not edit it yet, that would be great because we're just getting started. Um, and my guess is that um, if this is a format that seems sensible and useful, um, that over the next few days, I will gradually get everything out of the strategic plan into this format. And then this would be something of a, a living document. Um, I, I, I think that we could uh, use to track this work over the next couple of years. So. With that, I'm gonna, um, I think I can keep sharing my screen, but I am gonna try to jump back to the chat here and um, share the link. I think. Thanks, Cord. Yeah, and just as I said, I, I think this could, will be cr a critical tool for us as a staff um probably as i said i'm sharing with we're sharing this with you as a committee um we probably wouldn't bring the, this wouldn't be the thing that we'd share at a council like that whole placemat that state board make something at a higher level to, to karen's point would be a thing we'd share at the at the state board but that's that that i think for us is you know, that commitment to kind of keep the, the work moving forward. Um, and, and the other thing I guess I'd say, we did reorder the um, overarching goals a bit. And, and I think I said this, that the, 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 the overarching goals weren't in any particular order, <laughs> right? They just were, there are three kind of standalone things. We did see that some of the community capacity and justice action items were were critical to happen now and in the nearer term. So that's why that section is, I think, a bit more. Um, uh, you know, it's it has more due dates, more more start dates that are earlier on than say some of the other stuff. Um, but that's just a little bit more context. But now you're you guys are seeing the behind the curtain. So, any thoughts or questions? I think it's this gotta is be that terrific. Oh, sorry, Jaime. Go ahead. I was just gonna say this is gotta be the most impressive uh, 
implementation framework I've ever seen in the history of strategic plans I've been exposed to. And I've been exposed to much, mostly in the nonprofit, nonprofit you know, uh, million dollar below level. So thank you all. I like this a lot. Um, this is, I'm just even thinking that our one pager, our placemat, could even just, you know, some of these things are far distant future, but could narrow in to share us like, what are the outcomes that we're working on over the next six months? And that could be, you know, an evolving one pager that we use um, that has some of this on it. Um, I just shared also in the link, um, I am trying to find examples of uh, strategic plannings at the K-12 level that are really, um, that do a good job of centering equity. And I really like the language that this Alexandria Public Schools use, both in like, um, I think it just is a nice job of like, what's pretty high level for a district. And I could see that being pretty similar for us. Like what's high level for the council that we need to know. And this, does get into, you know, how is staff working and bringing things forward. Um, but in terms of the strategies and highlighted actions, I liked that language as well. And it, I noted um, that there might be, it might be there strategies and actions. I was just thinking about the theories of change and the, th the things that might be missing from this, like, um, or the way in which we know we'll be working actually would be our values. So it's built there. It's just different language. Um, anyways, that might be, there might be something useful to pull from this as well. Thanks, Les. I, I mean, I think that one of the pieces, Cord, we, we see you working on the dock. Maybe you want us to see all this magic that you're doing <laughs> that you could probably unchair <laughs> at this point. <laughs> you're talking, but of course we can't hear you because you're muted. There's that too. Um, oh yeah, sorry. I was. I just realized that I should probably add to this um, creation of the YDC YDD strategic plan placemat and just put it in there. Oh, there you go. Like it. That was all. That's all good. Um, and I think you can stop sharing cord. Will. Um, we'll look at this. The, oh, I'm trying to look at. Karen said she liked something on page nine. I'm trying to find it, but. Um, We'll, we're going to meet with our communi with the communications folks at ODE next week to see if we can't, you know, develop some, some, uh, something that looks a little bit, I don't know, more colorful <laughs> and or if there are to or tools that we can develop that are feel a little more dynamic. So we'll, we'll more, more to come on that. Um, but I, I do think, and Court has heard me say this over and over, I, I think that a, a piece that our, maybe it's our executive and strategy committee, maybe that's what we call it, um, it, we'll need to wrestle with, and we've done some thinking about this, is, and it's in, it, it is articulated, I think, very kind of nicely in that state board placemat thing about like, measures of success. I'm going to keep coming like the the matrix, the, 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 the spreadsheet that Cord share has this evidence piece, which I think is important. That feels very like deliverable and it's a thing in it beyond the thing. And we we're going to have some things that we're going to develop um, and we'll have real timelines for them. And, and as we develop multiple things <laughs> and achieve multiple tactical goals, we will also be meeting our strategies. I think we, we've got to do a little more thinking about how we articulate measures and maybe it's connected to, to this idea, Celeste, that you've mentioned, right? How to, sort of the theory of action and, and, and 
I think I think that what does success look like for each of these overarching goals, or at least what does success look like for the strategies? That's my that's a one piece. And in some cases, I get it, it may be actually a thing, but more importantly, I mean, I don't know if that's that's a actually that's not a measure. That's like a deliverable. What impacts? What, what things are going to shift or change um, as it relates to disparities or certain educational data or social emotional uh, learning, um, learning data. Those we've, we've, we've got to, I think, set some, create some measures around that um, and or benchmarks around those things. Uh, and so I'll just, I'll stop there. I think that's, I think that's, that is necessary and, and, and important work. And then ask ourselves over the next couple of years, yeah, you know, what's possible? Like maybe we, we're not going to see, maybe we won't close disparities completely, but maybe there we can cl close them by a certain percentage, or maybe we can get X, you know, there's a set of outputs and outcomes that I think we, we've got to stay focused on. I think this is just so fantastic. And with, when Chief Teague said that we can make a billion dollars, I think we just need to clone cord. Um. <laughs> you know, I, in terms of the visual, yeah, I agree. It's, it's clone cord. Um, but, um, you know, how do we, how do we tell the state, you know, the, the, um, the size, right, of the population that, we are charged with because um, it's, it's significant, you know, and, and oftentimes, you know, when people look at the word youth, right, they're, they're thinking teenage years, right? And we got six, you know, six year olds, right? And, you know, I, I don't know what was a visual I was showing a while back about, you know, you could see it, right? Kind of the continuum and you know, how do we incorporate some of that into, into telling the story through the visuals? Because we got a big group and a very small budget to work with. And we got a plan here, you know, so. So uh, Heidi, is there anything else on our agenda for today? Any decisions we need to make or anything else? I feel like we've covered it, but I want to double check. I think so. I, I think it, this was just an initial discussion around thinking about committee structure for implementation. And then I think now we're probably at public comment time. Brian or Cord or Melissa, are we on track? We are on track to maybe a minute ahead. Well done. <laughs> yeah, well, with that, um, appreciate everybody's contributions and time. Um, I think we can open it up to public comment if there is any. Melissa, help me here with the amount of time that anybody I see. Well, there was Tiffany. Tiffany um, had let me know um, that she was just uh, sitting in and did not have any public comment. I haven't right. heard from our other guests whether um, they'd like to make a public comment or not, but now is the time. And good. And there, it's Dane, Dania, maybe, if you have a comment. And I assume, Melissa, you've kind of let her know the parameters of that. Oh, I have not, but there's up to three minutes of, of time for public comment. Thank you. So 
looks like there is no public comment. And Jaime, uh, I would love uh, if you would help us with uh, the wrap up. Thank you. Awesome. If someone can give me access to the share. Oh, I do have access. Great. So, you know, to me, strategic plan is about purpose and direction, right? Um, which obviously applies to, to life in general. Uh, so I wanted to read something I wrote uh, about a, yeah, nine months ago. Uh, that's called, uh, Why Did We Come? A Brief Reflection of 30 Years and then North. And I have a photo to add to that. Why did we come here, Papa? Por qué? Why? Did we come about, did we come because of the so-called American dream to have a job, a big house, a big car to get an education? Why you saw Papa? A triunfar, dijo alguien por ahí, to succeed, said someone. Why did we come? Dijo un joven envejeciendo el movimiento, said a young man aging in the movement. To be the backbone of this country? El obrero? The peasant? To become the new political force and main economic driver? To be like them? Quien soy yo? Who am I? Do we have something else to offer? Something that's in us that we need to unlock? Una semilla y seed that's been passed on to us. Something we can't touch or see but can feel burning inside us. Why did you come, paisano? Compatriot. Where are you going? What is your gift to El Norte? That's me at the age of eight, right before going into a pickup truck and heading north to El Norte, Salem, Oregon. Thank you for sharing that. That's wonderful. Thanks, Jaime. Love it. Jaime and I spoke the other day and, and talked about the value of stories and storytelling. You're a fantastic storyteller. We, we need a, I don't know, we, we need to have you be our official. <laughs> Story. That's. I don't know how, how to make that happen. I think we just did as a committee. <laughs> you know, it does make me think. To we, um, what can we do to bring stories into our strategic planning process? Like, you know, I think the theory of change, the idea, is. You know, what's the story of what progress looks like? What are we looking for at the end? Um, but. It could be interesting just to think about, um, I think we're looking at this in a very like um, specific way with what are our key performance measures, but you know, it, it would be also nice. And I think our young people on the council would really also appreciate saying, what's the story of somebody who's experiencing um, this, what's the story of the change? I mean, it, it's just, it makes me think about our process and where we're making story or where we should be more intentional on building youth stories into our experience. Yeah, the way I, I look at it is, you know, how do you marry institutional knowledge or dominant culture knowledge, whatever you want to call it, with community wisdom, right? That's in the heart and soul that, um, has just naturally been passed on to people. Uh, well, it's been documented or not, right? It's just been passed on in the, the, DNA, the DNA, right? They were just manifested in different ways. So where's that balance, you know? Where's that balance as we tell our story, as we conduct our meetings and, and et cetera? And I think that story is gonna have such a great role to play as you start uh, working with other uh, government bodies and with our grantees. Uh, I think story is going to be really fundamental to that. In some ways, it's almost the, 
and I hate to go back to corporate speak, but uh, the marketing challenge, right? Uh, the, the facts and the figures and the goals really help satisfy the rational mind, but it's really that story piece that brings in the heart that gets everybody moving in the direction that you want to go. Um, you know, uh, and this is sort of the example where it works um, in a bad way, but, you know, Reagan launched the welfare queen, right? And that has uh, negatively impacted policy since the Reagan era. And it was just one woman and one story at that one time, but it has such a powerful impact. Thanks, Karen. Yeah, that, and how do we raise up the young, young boy on the horse or the young woman that that's that youth affirming that youth strength and safety like but it, how do we embody that i think Karen, I, what i hear you saying or what i feel when i hear that is not only in the data and the the, the rap, but in this in, in the story and the voice and and it's a I think it's our opportunity. It's not, it, 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 this is probably the other million dollar, it's a, we don't have to put a price tag on it, but the other, how we do that, or maybe we don't have to overthink it. We just need the voices in the room, literally and virtually, and to make, not make space, but to know that the space <laughs> uh, actually is in so much better when we let, when the stories are, are there. I got another one for the next YDC meeting. This is gonna be good. Just wait and see. It's about, it's about the, don't forget about the little child inside you. About that, for a teaser. Can't wait. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> well, so thought provoking, what a, Thank you for sharing that. Uh, I think we can adjourn now. We've done everything we set out to do, and I gave yeah. you maybe an extra minute. Thank you all. Great work. Thank you, Jaime, for sharing your story, too. Bye, everyone.